If you've ever been on a safari or watched TV of a safari, the chances are that the vehicle was a Land Rover Defender. The Defender is so iconic in that space and this 2020 Defender is completely redesigned and redone and it is still capable, it is modern, luxurious, and still super rugged. There's a lot that I like about it. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's get started. Full disclosure, in this video we do not take this Defender off-road, which is part of what it's all about, but I did get to ride with somebody going off-road a while back. I'll put the channel in the description below. Go to Brake Check Show to check that Land Rover Defender video out. Now powering the Land Rover, at least in the US, you're not gonna find any diesels or options like that. You get a few different options from a couple four-cylinder engines to this six-cylinder engine. This is actually a mild hybrid. It is not a full-on hybrid, but a mild hybrid three-liter inline six-cylinder engine. It comes with a twin scroll turbo and a 48 volt supercharger and we'll talk about how it drives in the test drive. Power numbers are pretty good at 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Very peppy for this vehicle. It also comes with the ZF 8 speed automatic transmission and 0 to 60 can be 5.8 seconds. But it does feel a little quicker than that. This Defender of course comes with all wheel drive which is capable of putting up to 100% of the power to the front or the rear axle wherever you need it. It also comes with what they call an active rear axle to help reduce slip and spin on that axle. And towing can be over 8,200 pounds. That's impressive for this vehicle. At least if you're gonna be taking this thing off road and towing some stuff with you, at least you know you're set. And miles per gallon, if you're curious, is 17 miles per gallon in the city, 22 on the highway, 19 combined. Not good, but considering the power and the scope of what this vehicle is capable of, I think we'll take it. Now as we take a look at some of the exterior details and features, first of all, this is the 110 SE. That means it's the four-door model, but you can get the Land Rover Defender 90, which is the two-door model. Trims will range all the way from the standard 90 or 110 all the way up to the 110X, and this SE is kind of a mid-grade trim, but I'm gonna show you everything that you get. On the outside, Land Rover kept its iconic boxy design with the round headlights. This rides on the D7X architecture, which Land Rover says is the toughest architecture they have ever built. It's not body on frame, but they say it is triple times as strong the torsional rigidity of a body on frame design. Now let's look at all these exterior features and details. So first of all, right up front, you're gonna have Defender written right across the front of it, which I like, I think it's a nice, distinctive marker for this Defender. And you also get LED headlights standard on the base model, but with our model here, we've got the premium LED headlights with the signature lighting. So look at that, you've got that circle with the kind of cut over the top half, LED blinker in there and those little squares. So very distinctive design. They also look really cool at night. And I love the fact that they kept the circles for the Defender, even on this modern Defender. With this, we also get LED fog lights down below and kind of a rugged front end. You've got a good approach angle because of this short overhang. Kind of a small grill overall, but another neat feature that actually could come in handy off-road is a headlight washer. And one disappointing thing is that this looks like, you know, kind of like a skid plate type thing, but this is actually pretty much just plastic, so nothing too rugged there. Our Defender isn't equipped with it, but you can even get a 10,000 pound winch optional coming out the front. And another cool thing is up on the hood. So it's not a big bulky hood, but I like the patterns that you get on each side. It just adds to the rugged texture of this Defender. And this color is called the Gondwana Stone. I'd love to know what y'all think of this color. It's like a brownish green color, kind of a dirty color. I think it looks slick with this Land Rover, especially with the black wheels and the black accents. Speaking of the wheels, we get 18 inch steel wheels standard on the base model. 20 inch wheels will come regularly on this SE model, but we have the optional 19 inch gloss black wheels. What do y'all think of that? I like the way black wheels look, but you certainly don't have to get black wheels. And this even has beefed up sidewalls on its tires to help reduce uh, punctures. Now, what do y'all think of the design of the Defender? I love that they retained its boxy shape, its iconic design. There's no mistaking that this is still a modern Defender. And this mirror right here is power folding. It's got a blinker on it. It's got a camera on it. It automatically dims and can reverse or tilt in reverse, both this and the passenger side, which is awesome. We also have a special roof up top that I'll show you in a little bit. Got the black side body and black roof. So you've got a contrast roof. 
big upright boxy style in the back and got the geometric square shapes for the taillights just like the headlights so you've got matching taillights you got the tire on the back a swing door and that metal looking piece back there is still plastic just like it is up front which is kind of a bummer you can see the turn signals over here take up all four of those squares and the little light down below on each side is actually a rear fog light which is kind of handy dimensionally the defender is about 197 inches long which makes it a pretty big vehicle and it is fairly wide thanks to its big wide fender flares it also comes with an adaptive suspension that I'll talk about in the test drive. It also comes with an electronic air suspension with a few different heights for extreme off-roading, normal, and even below normal for easy access. Plus, this Defender can wade up to 35.4 inches of water and it'll alert you if you approach that height. And ground clearance normally is 8.6 inches, but up to 11.5 inches in off-road mode. Now I'm going to quickly go through the different heights. Right now we're at the entry height, which is 1.6 inches below normal. I'm going to move it up to normal. And now we're at normal height, and then we can move it up even higher to off-road height. So what do you think of that? Pretty cool by the touch of a button. Obviously I sped that up, but you have those options. Now the cargo area, I like that Land Rover stuck with its side hinged door and this rear tire back here. Of course you can remove this, but I like the fact that we actually have this door. You're not gonna find some fancy foot activated lift gate or anything. And then let's go ahead and take a look back here because this is where some of the really cool stuff is. First of all, in the door, there is a little area for some storage on each side. And then one of my favorite things is just the quality of the material back here. So first of all, this is rugged, tough, it's hard there's no carpet back here it's just a durable material there's an area where you can have a cargo cover you've got a uh, a hook on each side we've got a, an led light we've got a 12 volt power outlet and then there are several tie downs there's one there one in each corner there's a little net right there there's a spot to hold gear right here as well we've got the alpine lights up there so on this side you've even got a full-on 110 volt three-prong outlet so that's great to see another net over there another little spot there so back here this is excellent in terms of space overall and overall function another thing is you've got these hooks right here that could be used to hold something down tie something down as well underneath the, of this floor you've got the jack kit and space for some extra cubbies or storage also thanks to our air suspension if let's say you've got the vehicle in off-road mode or you just want to adjust the height there's a button back here to where you can lower or raise the vehicle for easier loading whatever it may be so that's pretty awesome and in order to fold the second row down you do have to go back there the seat bottom pulls out the seats fold down and then you get some good space with that and it is also really flat and still has the same durable material and even though this isn't as long as it probably could be for most people, it's still nice and flat and there's tons of space up here. So you could camp back here if you wanted to. So here's your Land Rover key fob. You've got your lock, unlock. You can even turn the lights on or off just with this without locking it or unlocking it. And then it's just kind of silly that they have this logo on there because it doesn't actually open up when you press the button. But it is a nice key fob, solid, feels good in your hand. And the way the smart key system works is that the mirrors automatically fold and there's just a button here to lock it or unlock it. Mirrors will open, you can open up, and when you unlock or approach the vehicle, you actually get approach lighting where Defender illuminates on the ground, which looks pretty sweet. Another cool feature of this Land Rover is that you have rubber floors, uh, kind of like the back. You have a durable floor right here, so we have carpets in here right now, but this is very easy to clean. So if you get dirty in here, you can wash this out and it's almost flush with the outside. So it's not a super big door sill. So if you really do get dirty and go off-roading, you can clean it out. As you hop into the front seats of the Defender, even if you have mobility issues or your height challenged, the fact that it can lower down with this air suspension makes it a breeze to get in. And to top it off, you also get the memory settings where your seat and your steering wheel can move automatically. Now, one thing unique to this Defender is that we don't have it. We have a normal ordinary console, but you can get a jump seat in the middle. So you can have three people riding across right here. But in our particular model, we have the optional 14-way power 
heated seats that have three position memory settings and they've got durable materials with robust woven textiles with grained leather. So these seats look and feel rugged and durable. The bolstering is medium. The seat cushion is fairly comfortable and it's not too bad, especially hopefully it's as durable as Land Rover says it is. Our seats are heated with memory settings, but we don't have ventilation. You would have to move up in trim level to get the ventilation, ventilated seats. We get a leather wrapped steering wheel, but thanks to the cold climate package, it is also heated. Not to mention the fact, like you saw, that it's power adjustable. Now a quick note on the interior, I think that the interior layout is one of my favorite things about this vehicle. And it's not just the layout, it's the materials that Land Rover uses in here. It's very practical, everything has a nice feel to it. There's really nothing at all in this interior that looks or feels cheap. Now right off the bat we have remote start right here. Now a couple things right off the bat. First of all, we actually have a heated windscreen with our climate, cold climate package. And you can't see it right now, but there are actually little heating elements inside of the windshield. And there's actually a film that has a cutout right here that you can't see that actually helps to block the sun. And more about that, check this out. That's usually a terrible spot for the sun, but you've got a little visor that you can fold down. And more on the materials. You've got a nice kind of soft material running across the dash right here, as well as there. That's the same material that's on the armrest. And even up on the dash, it's like a, a rubbery textured material. So really, really cool from Land Rover for all the materials that they use. Soft material up here. Hopefully it is durable. It feels like it probably could be. Same with the armrest. And look at these exposed bolts. That's pretty cool. Even this material is almost like a rubbery plastic. And even these plastic materials here just have a quality feel to them. So Land Rover did a nice job with that. Even this door pocket, it's not really big enough to, to hold a vertical water bottle, but it is big enough to go across. There's a rubber liner in here and the same kind of quality material inside of there. The steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to. You have the same kind of rugged plasticky feel here and a leather wrapped wheel, circle leather wrap. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I like the design here as well. You've got the kind of different controls for the steering wheel. So you push that and then the mapping will change on that side. And then you've got cruise control settings over here. You've got a heated steering wheel button right there. Those are rain sensing windshield wipers on the stock and all the light controls are housed on this one stock. Land Rover gives you a little shelf storage area pretty much across the entire dash that has the same kind of nice material and rubber bottom so things don't slide around. Now in front of us, this display is just over a foot, 12.3 inch display. It is customizable using your steering wheel. You can change different settings on here. So for example, you can even change the layout. So you can customize what's on the left, what's on the right. You can have two dials on here. So you've got kind of more traditional look. You can have a full map. My only complaint is that it takes a while to get to certain things in here using the steering wheel. It's just kind of slow. So that's one complaint, but it is pretty much fully customizable. You can even use your light stock to change the information down there and change and reset your trip computers and all of that. One thing to note is that we have adaptive cruise control, which can be adjusted with these arrows or these arrows. That is an option on this model. The Defender X comes with a head up display that will be right up here, but ours does not have that. You'd have to go to the X to get that. And as we move across, there's more of that shelving. You've got the nice material, nice material, and kind of that rugged plastic in that shelving, and then a rubber base. So stuff will not slide around. You can throw bottles up here. You can throw tools, junk, whatever. It's even open behind this screen. So you can shove stuff back behind the screen if you want to. And look at that. It says Defender on that side. So that's kind of cool. There's even a USB port right there. So a really neat practical area. Just It's just a very rugged but practical interior. And then this display right here is a 10 inch display. This has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's got an upgraded sound system, but you can get an even better sound system. There's a lot of stuff that you can customize on here. A lot of information that you can also see. For example, I'll just go to media. You've got a few shortcuts over here if you wanna to go to your map, go back to home. This is the home screen with different tiles that you can choose what's on here 
you can also have it so that you actually have a bunch of little apps on there you have quick customizable settings where you can do shortcuts you can have access to all sorts of different stuff here so for example let me show you these icons for the home screen instead of the tiles so this is what we get it basically just shows everything that we kind of looked at a little bit ago you can even have personalized accounts so everything is set to you or your spouse or anybody else that's going to drive the vehicle can have their own settings and check this out we have the clear sight ground view and this whole entire 360 camera so this is the on-road setting let me show you the ground view in a second we have parking sensors you can see next to the vehicle it's really cool and amazing at just how well you can see around the vehicle so this is an advanced 360 camera so that is pretty sweet and if you're going off road you can see what is in front of you you can see what the the um, status of your axles are whether you're locked in or not that's really awesome that you can see in front you can see right next to each fender so that is really really cool even some towing information here as well one complaint is this shifter so it just feels kind of weird to have a shifter like this in a defender and from the driver's seat it almost it doesn't get in the way of the screen visually but it just feels like it's in the way as far as going to reach for it it's really not but it just kind of sticks out and i'm not a huge fan of that but even the material here you have like a rubber material around all of this stuff right here these buttons have a nice lining to them i'm totally serious that everything in here feels like a nice quality material you also have dual zone climate control you and your passenger for your seats you actually press that then you can turn on your heated seats and if we had ventilated seats we could go to the left it's kind of a tease that it shows it even though we don't have it this right here is where you can adjust your height low or go up and it shows up on your information display traction control you even have a low range mode so for example press that i'm going to shift into neutral and low range gearing is selected so you are good to go for some low range off-roading you also have downhill assist right here which automatically activated when we went into low range this is your actual drive mode button so you press that and then it will show on the screen but you use your dial to control what you do so for example there's eco mode there's comfort mode you also have uh, grass and, and snow and gravel mud and ruts you got a sand and then you've got rock crawling mode as well so it all kind of shows up and then you have a wade mode if you're going into some water or you can just go in straight automatic mode so all of that is pretty cool this is just kind of crowded which there's a little bit of differentiation between the drive modes controls and like the climate control and the volume knob is over here which is just silly it's just kind of weird having it over there but these are all just small complaints overall down here we've got a type c and regular usb plus a 12 volt power outlet so you've got charging ports there same nice soft material here you have some exposed bolts as well and there's a storage cubby with a rubber liner down below that two-tiered storage comes in handy to separate items i like the materials and the rubber lining then you have a bigger bottle holder here a smaller bottle holder here and my green bottle fits nice and snug which is probably good for a vehicle like this but I wonder how long these grippers will last. This armrest has a nice material as well with a little bit of padding, but it's a really soft material. Lift that up, exposes wireless charging, and we have kind of a, a unique deep storage area there. Land Rover also gives you a lock and glove box down there. And one thing I wanna note is that visibility kind of stinks out of here, even though it is boxy, if you have that second row up but if the second row is down then you can see pretty good squared windows but those seats and that headrest take up that entire third window so something to keep in mind land rover also gives you an automatic dimming rearview mirror but you can actually still flip it and get this camera up here so as it focuses you can see garage controls are still up here and you can even customize this uh, to change your view but it's really nice to have this rear camera now hopping into the back seat of the Defender, you still get grab handles on both sides, which makes it easy to get in. You've got this panoramic roof up above, and space really isn't too bad. So first of all, I've got good knee space behind myself at five foot nine. I've got good foot space, and the materials back here are still just as nice as they are up front. Land Rover also gives us a center folding armrest right here with 
couple of cup holders. These seats do not recline or scoot forward and backwards, and they're not heated on our trim, but we've got air conditioning vents, a little storage cubby, two 12 volt power outlets, and actually four USB ports back here. Two of them are into, built into the back of these seats. And it should be known that a third row, technically two seats back there, are optional. And for your backseat passengers, when they're going to get out, it has a clear exit monitor. It's got a little icon on the door that will light up if there's a car coming so you don't open your door. All right, y'all, we are getting going on this Defender test drive. So in this drive, I wanna give you impressions of what it's like to daily drive it, ride comfort, handling, acceleration with this three liter V6, with, or uh, inline six, which is actually pretty darn good. And uh, like I said, I did not take this off road, but I rode with somebody that did take one off road a while back on Brake Check Show YouTube's channel. So be sure to check that out. Now, right off the bat, one thing that's kind of cool, you can customize this, but you can have the brake hold function be automatic if you press the brake in far enough. So I pushed the brake in far enough and I'm on brake hold right now. So that's kind of neat how you can customize that. But my first impression of this Land Rover is that it just feels like a tank there's one thing i gotta say about it that i don't like which i'll say in a little bit but i have it in the off-road height right now you can do that up to 50 miles an hour to where we sit up nice and tall you've got a really nice large commanding view of the road great ground clearance good ride height and once you get to 50 miles an hour it automatically will lower you back down to normal i just lowered us down let's go ahead and get on it And it got those RPMs up. Even with this turbocharged mild hybrid, those RPMs get up. And this eight speed transmission has actually been really smooth. The ZF transmission, I don't know a whole lot about the ZF transmissions. I know that they are, you know, fairly popular, but in this application with this uh, engine, it's been really smooth. Power delivery is good, even just partial throttle here. It's pretty quick to respond. Obviously we have the uh, electric supercharger as well. So we kind of get some pretty instantaneous torque with this model, which is pretty awesome. Over 400 pound feet of torque and ride comfort. I gotta say one big difference between this and the Evoque that I drove last year is that this is definitely smoother. That Evoque had like 22 inch wheels, I believe, which really gave this, uh, gave it kind of a rough, harsh ride. But this has the adaptive suspension, so it can change and, and be the best for certain scenarios. And it's done quite well. It's certainly not like a body on frame type rough, rigid ride, but it's not minivan like either, but it's composed and it does really nice. I, I have no complaints with that. Um, the steering feel, the weight of the steering is good. It's not super lightweight. It's not real heavy. It's not like this vehicle feels like a sporty vehicle. It's big, tall, and boxy. So you can't expect that. But it is quick, fun, responsive. Got a little bit of sound coming out of that powertrain. And I would have to say, daily driving it, I have the screen off because it flickers with this camera. but. I like where everything is. This whole setup is a little bit strange with this and the screen right there, and the screen seems to be a little bit far back. But practicality, storage areas, everything is really good in here. Materials are perfect, on par, hopefully rugged and durable. They sure feel like it. As we get going around here, I'm gonna go ahead and get on it, put the pedal down, give you a sound, a feel of this powertrain. Here we go. gets through its gears fairly quickly eight speeds and one thing that you might notice right away is that there's some wind noise in here but let's see how we feel around these corners even though this is a big tall boxy SUV it's really composed in these corners for what it is not sports car but I've been very impressed with how well this drives for being the defender off-road capable big tall and boxy 
but it just handles well. We've got the adaptive and air suspension. So for daily driving, road driving, driving in canyons, whatever it is, I'm sure most of you are, are not gonna take this off road, but you can. And if you drive on road, you're gonna feel very confident and comfortable with how well it does. It is just a nice vehicle to drive. It's a pleasure to drive. You've got great visibility, great ride height out the front here. One thing that I've got to complain about though, is the noise vibration and harshness factor. Now it's boxy. There is quite a bit of wind noise that comes in, especially at interstate speeds. Uh, so that is one big complaint um, for a luxury vehicle. This is not laminated glass. Might be one reason for that is that if you are off-roading and if you actually do get into some water or you roll the vehicle and you need to get out the window, you can break this glass much easier than you can a laminated glass. So that might be why they don't, but there's definitely some wind noise. Uh, once you get on a rougher textured road, it's not too bad though. Now we're getting on that rougher road so you can get a sense of road noise. And the other thing is on a rougher road like this, there's been little bits of creeks in the materials like in the, the almost like the headliner the pillars maybe even over on that door i don't know what it is but it's it just bugs me it shouldn't be anything like that in here it's not all the time but it just makes me a little bit nervous of the build quality in here even though these materials feel and look awesome i just hope that that's not an issue but you can hear a little bit of the road noise let's get on it one more time Very quick to respond. A fun, responsive powertrain. So I wanted to give you at least just a little glimpse of being on gravel, just kind of what it feels like. And it's pretty quiet out here. It's smooth, you don't feel much. I don't have anywhere that I can actually legally off-road. Everything is privately owned around here, which is a shame, but even just on this gravel, no rattles right now which is kind of strange considering I felt those earlier but I wish I could take this defender off-road I really do now I got this kind of in a little ditch right here and I definitely felt or heard some creaking happening put it in off-road mode you know you certainly didn't have to but hey I'm sure there's plenty of Land Rover videos going off-road I'm excited about this Defender. I really am. I wish I could take this off-road for y'all. Be sure to check out Brake Check Show's YouTube channel because um, I know he got to do a little bit of off-roading with it. And I got to see some of it. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. So to wrap things up on this redone Land Rover Defender, I think Land Rover still tips its cap to the Defenders of the past in a good way. There's a lot of things to reminisce with in some of the old Defenders that show up in this model. but as far as it being as capable and as rugged and as long lasting as some of those old defenders that you see on those safari shows only time will tell aside from that this land rover defender is still modern capable luxurious and rugged for anybody that wants a vehicle like this i hope you all enjoyed this video leave your comments down below give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more reviews have a great day